Hello. Good evening. My name is Dan Whitfield. I'm the independent candidate running for United States Senate here in Arkansas. And this evening, I wanted to talk to you all a little bit about the Declaration of Independence. It's one of the most important documents ever written by our founding fathers. And a lot of people have not listened to it or read it in a long time. So tonight, if you all will join me for about 15 minutes or so, I'm going to play the Declaration of Independence and talk about how it's relevant to today's government while we're going through it. The actual video is only about 10 minutes and 20 seconds long, so just bear with me a little bit. I'll get it started, and thank you all for joining me. It is read by Max McLean. In Congress, July 4th, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. And I think that is very important because that is something that we have forgotten. Everybody, all men, we are all created equal. It doesn't matter whether we are American, whether we are Chinese, whether we are Iranian, whether we're black, whether we're white, if we're a man, a woman, we are all created equally. We're all the same on the inside. And a lot of people seem to forget that nowadays. I understand we used to have a lot of closet racists, and now we have a lot of racists who thinks it's okay and cool to be racist in the open. And this is something we need to stop. Because hatred, this racism, it's not something that's inherent. It's not something we learn from being children. It's something we're taught as children. Hatred is taught, it's not inherent, and we need to fix that. Um, the next thing that it does go on to say is that our, our elected officials are supposed to be representing the governed. They're supposed to be the will of the governed. The constituents are supposed to be the people who rule our government, who come up with the laws, who vote for the laws. We got into the point where our legislators that are voting on laws, that are creating laws, they aren't creating laws based on what's best for those they're governing. They're creating laws that are, well, most of the laws, honestly, that are created aren't created by legislators, but are actually created by think tanks, by corporations that are paid by other corporations to create laws. And then our legislators just market these laws. That's all they are, they're just salesmen. Our legislators are supposed to be the voice of the people, the voice of the governed, and we need to fix that. We, if we don't bring that back, we're gonna get to the point where we have no more government. It's just gonna be whoever has more money is the one, they're the ones who make the laws and they're not gonna benefit us, they're only gonna benefit them that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. So when the government becomes destructive towards the will of the people govern, govern, governing it, it is up to the people, it is the right of the people to alter the government or abolish it. If our government is no longer by the people, for the people, and it's not working for us, it is our right as Americans to either alter our government or abolish it. Straight from the Founding Fathers. And to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such forms as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. 
prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government. And we see that with the incredibly high taxation that we're facing. We see that, I mean, I'm a social capitalist. I do believe in capitalism. There is a point for it. We would not be where we are today without capitalism. But we got to the point where instead of being a capitalist society, we have become a crony capitalist society. We have given capitalism all of the power. We're, we're no longer trying to better our, ourselves and our country through capitalism, but we're using capitalism to punish the poor to keep the poor poor, to make the working class poor so that the ultra wealthy, the richest one tenth of 1% can hog all of our wealth. Did you know the richest one tenth of 1% of Americans take 82% of the wealth gained every single year? One tenth of 1% take 82% of the money that we help them make. And I mean, that's not super terrible per se. You know, there, there is a purpose for that. But where it gets really bad is when we start to see these people taking all the money that we're spending in the economy, and instead of taking that 82% and putting it back into our economy to make our country better, they take that money and they send it to offshore foreign banks. They send it to banks in Sweden. They send it to banks in Switzerland and Panama, and they avoid taxation, and they avoid putting that money back into our pockets. That's what trickle-down economics is. That's what supply-side economics is. And that's why it doesn't work. We've seen it doesn't work. Moving on. And to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies. And such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present King of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. He has refused his assent to laws, the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. He has refused his assent to laws. He is above the law. The law no longer matters to the king. The laws that govern the people are under the king. We are seeing this today with our president right now. He is above the law. And we can see this. Uh, the Department of Justice clearly stated a sitting president cannot be the target of a criminal indictment. A sitting president cannot be a criminal. We cannot challenge. It's so frustrating. I'm sorry. Nobody is above the law. And if, a, if a, you know, a president becomes above the law, this is our instruction booklet on what to do. He has forbidden his governors to pass laws of immediate and pressing importance. He has forbidden his governors to pass laws of immediate importance. Does this not remind you of COVID-19 and telling the governors of the United States of America that their people will be denied personal protective equipment unless they ask for his, unless they give him praise and ask him. He is withholding PPE from the governors without getting their praise. Unless suspended in their operation till his assent should be obtained. And when so suspended, he has utterly neglected to attend to them. He has refused to pass other laws for the accommodation of large districts of people, unless those people would relinquish the right of representation in the legislature, a right inestimable to them and formidable to tyrants only. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, 
and distant from the depository of their public record. He has called together legislative bodies and placed unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of their public records. We are seeing this with our current executive administration. We have the fossil fuel industry regulating the fossil fuel industry. We have Wall Street regulating Wall Street. We have the fossil fuel industry regulating the Environmental Protection Agency and the, the regular... The, Oh, this is so frustrating. It's so relevant to what we are dealing with today. For the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures, he has dissolved representative houses repeatedly for opposing with manly firmness his invasions on the rights of the people. He has refused for a long time after such dissolutions to cause others to be elected, whereby the legislative powers incapable of annihilation have returned to the people at large for their exercise the state remaining in the meantime exposed to all the dangers of invasion from without and convulsions within he has endeavored to prevent the population of these states for that purpose obstructing the laws of naturalization of foreigners refusing to pass others to encourage their migrations hither and raising the conditions of new appropriations of lands he has endeavored to prevent migration, to prevent the populations of states from having laws that protect for naturalization. Our president has literally said he wants to take away anchor babies. He wants to make it so that if a child, if a child's parents are not citizens and that child is born here in America, it will not be a naturalized citizen directly against directly against our Declaration of Independence. He has closed our borders now to all foreigners. All immigration has been closed. They're using the COVID-19 epidemic. I understand we shouldn't be having, you know, people travel from other countries here right now. When is it going to stop? The Muslim ban, that was just the first step. When are they going to finally say, okay, we got COVID-19 under control. Let's open up the borders. For all we know, that might not even happen. He has obstructed the administration of justice by refusing his assent to laws for establishing judiciary powers. He has already placed two SCOTUS seats. These are lifelong seats. Two secretary or two Supreme Court justices that are going to be there for the rest of our lives, the rest of their lives determining the best way to interpret law. We really need to, number one, we need term limits on the Supreme Court. We can't have lifelong positions and we need more Supreme Courts go to seats. We can't have the ability for one lucky president such as Donald J. Trump to have the ability to put 30% of the Supreme Court seats in. We can't, that's not safe, that's not what it was there for. Especially when we have disasters like Brett Kavanaugh. People were upset about Brett Kavanaugh because rape allegations. Well, the problem is, is we'll never ever know whether or not it happened or not. I mean, I believe Dr. Ford, of course. I listened to her testimony, the entire thing, and you know, I believe her. But that wasn't the right questions. That wasn't the right way to go about preventing Brett Kavanaugh from getting into the SCOTUS the Supreme Court. What we should have been focused on was the fact that only 4%, only 4% of his documented career was released to the public. Only 6% of his documented career was released to the very people voting to nominate him into a lifelong position. 6%. That's it. Everything else was deemed classified and they weren't allowed to even look at. And that 6% that they got, I think it came in a form of like 20,000 pages the night before they had to vote on a nomination for a Supreme Court justice. It was criminal what happened. And we focused on the wrong issues and that's why it was allowed to happen. He has made judges dependent on his will alone for the tenure of their offices and the amount and payment of their salaries. We have seen that. One of the biggest things 
that he brags about is the Trump administration has now replaced 60% of our federal judges. 60% of our federal judges are Trump appointed judges. He has erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. He has kept among us in times of peace standing armies without the consent of our legislators. He has effected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. And this is really important as well with how he basically has turned our army into a mercenary army for Saudi Arabia. We have become an army for hire, an oil army for hire. He has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our constitution and unacknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation for quartering large bodies of armed troops among us for protecting them by a mock trial, from punishment for any murders which they should commit on the inhabitants of these states. And we're seeing this right now. He's pardoning criminals. Criminals are getting away with crimes. I mean, and a lot of the people he's pardoning, it's all like, you know, tax evasion, fraud, things like that that have literally hurt millions of Americans' lives for cutting off our trade with all parts of the world. For cutting off our trade with all parts of the world. Does that not sound familiar? Have you seen the new trade agreements? Have you seen the tariffs in these trade wars? For imposing taxes on us without our consent. For depriving us in many cases of the benefits of trial by jury. For transporting us beyond seas to be tried for pretended offenses for abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province, establishing therein an arbitrary government and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it at once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule into these colonies. For taking away our charters, abolishing our most valuable laws and altering fundamentally the forms of our government. A lot of our valuable laws that the Trump administration is responsible for getting rid of our EPA regulations, we've had Wall Street regulations. These are all regulations, the Glass-Steagall Act. This was all to protect Americans. This was to protect us consumers from predatory lending, from predatory practices, from corporations like Tyson contaminating the water we drink, the air we breathe. I mean, look at just here in Arkansas, Northwest Arkansas, Beaver Lake. We had to shut down five beaches last summer because E. coli outbreaks. Do you think it's a coincidence that we have Tyson dumping water into our waterways and our water is sick? Did you know 96% of our Kansans are drinking contaminated water? This isn't just made up crap. This is research papers done by the U of A, research papers done by independent sources. One of the things I wanted to do with my campaign a year ago was I wanted to get water testing equipment and I wanted to test water upstream from a Tyson facility and then downstream. Unfortunately, it was too expensive and I couldn't do that, but I didn't have to because I started looking at all the other people who've done it. That's what our universities are doing. For suspending our own legislators and declaring themselves invested with power to legislate for us in all cases, what's... We have literally listened to Donald Trump state on live TV that he would suspend Congress and pass laws without them. So ever, he has abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. He has plundered our seas, ravaged our coasts, burnt our towns, and destroyed the lives of our people. He is at this time transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death, desolation, and tyranny already begun with circumstances of cruelty and perfidy scarcely paralleled in the most barbarous ages and totally unworthy the head of a civilized nation. He has constrained our fellow citizens taken captive on the high seas to bear arms against their country, to become the executioners of their friends and brethren or to fall themselves by their hands. He has excited domestic insurrections among us. And as it he has incited domestic insurrections among us. Does this not sound familiar with him inciting violence on 
especially in Virginia recently. He's telling people, take up arms, go to your state capitals. Endeavor to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers, the merciless Indian savages whose known rule of warfare is an undistinguished destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. In every stage of these oppressions, we have petitioned for redress in the most humble terms. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant is unfit to be the ruler of a free people. Nor have we been wanting in attention to our British brethren. We have warned them from time to time of attempts by their legislature to extend an unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. We have reminded them of the circumstances of our emigration and settlement here. We have appealed to their native justice and magnanimity, and we have conjured them by the ties of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interrupt our connections and correspondence. They too have been deaf to the voice of justice and of consanguinity. We must, therefore, acquiesce in the necessity which denounces our separation and hold them as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies in war, in peace, friends. We, therefore, the representatives of the United States of America, in general congress, assembled, appealing to the supreme judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions, do, in the name and by the authority of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown, and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved, and that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and to do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. So that was the Declaration of Independence. It's not very long. The document is only a few pages. It was a warning from our founding fathers. It was instructions on what to do when we face tyranny. And you can clearly see the kind of tyranny we're facing today it's not a whole lot different than the kind of tyranny we faced hundreds of years ago. You know, I, I suggest uh, if you just go to YouTube and search the De Declaration of Independence, you can listen to it one more time and you can analyze it yourself. But it's really important that we don't forget where we came from and that we learn from the mistakes that our founding fathers made so that we don't make those same mistakes again. But sorry, I get worked up oh, over this thing. Um, you know, thank you all so much for joining me for this short video on the Declaration of Independence and how it's relevant to today's government. Um, I do appreciate your time. I appreciate all of your support. Uh, make sure you check out ReplaceTomCotton.com because we have to take our government back. We can't afford to have a government that is bought by billionaires for billionaires. We have to have a government that is by the people for the people. But thank you all again so much. My name is Dan Whitfield. I'm the independent candidate running for United States Senate here in Arkansas. May God bless you all. May you all have a good night. And may God bless America.